Hello, this is a virtual microscopy slide of squamous cell carcinoma of the penis. We are looking at the glans penis here, and this is the tumor. This is the epithelium of the glans. Here is the penile urethra. Let's just have a very quick look at the normal epithelium of the penis, and we can see that this is stratified squamous epithelium. In this case, there is a little bit of surface keratinization. This may or may not be present. Just deep to this is the lamina propria, which is composed of collagen and blood vessels. And in this particular case, we can also see that there is quite a lot of chronic inflammation, which comprises many lymphocytes and some plasma cells. Moving deeper, we can see that this area shows lots of large, prominent blood vessels. And this is part of the erectile tissue. This is known as corpus spongiosum. And it is comprised of blood vessels, collagen bundles, and also nerve bundles. We can see a nerve bundle here and another very small one here. And moving deeper into this central region, this is the penile urethra. I just want to highlight that the epithelium of the penile urethra is slightly different from that of the urothelium in the more proximal urinary tract, such as in the bladder. This is more of a stratified columnar type epithelium. And on the surface, we see columnar cells instead of the usual umbrella cells that we see in the more proximal urinary tract. Umbrella cells are usually polygonal, very large, with abundant cytoplasm and one to several nuclei. So again here we can see that the surface epithelial cells are columnar in shape. And this can also be seen very nicely here. Sometimes intraepithelial neoplasia or dysplasia or carcinoma in situ can be seen in the penile urethra in cases of squamous cell carcinoma of the penis. Now let's take a closer look at the tumor itself. And we can see that this is a mass that is relatively superficial. It is composed of islands of malignant squamous cells. And these cells have quite enlarged nuclei, variably prominent nucleoli. We can see some mitotic figures as well, and there's one here. And as we move along in this area, again, we can see a mitotic figure, and we can see that the nuclei are a little bit more atypical here with more prominent nucleoli. In other areas, we can see that there is keratin formation. So this is keratinizing squamous cell carcinoma. And we can also appreciate the presence of a few keratin pearls. Here is a keratin pearl, and this is a classical feature of keratinizing squamous cell carcinoma. And as we look at the deeper invading front of the tumor, the tumor is actually inciting a marked inflammatory response. We can see lots of plasma cells, lymphocytes, and these bright red cells or cells with bright red granules, which are eosinophils. These are present at the invading front of the tumor. And not only is there an inflammatory response, there is also a desmoplastic stromal response. There are more stromal cells, which are spindled and elongated just around the invading tumor cell nests. Regarding the depth of invasion, we can see that this tumor is definitely invading into the lamina propria, and over here it is also coming just into the corpus spongiosum. So it is not a very deeply invasive tumor, it is relatively superficially invasive. Let's learn a bit more about squamous cell carcinoma of the penis. This is a malignant epithelial tumor of the penis that arises from the glands or the inner foreskin. And usually there will be a mass or an ulcer. You can see here in this instance, there is an ulcer on the glands in the region of the coronal sulcus. 
And here there is a mess, not only involving the glands of the penis and the proximal penis, but also the foreskin. The patients may also present with enlarged inguinal lymph nodes, which can either be due to metastatic squamous cell carcinoma or infection. And you can see an example of a virtual pathology specimen of squamous cell carcinoma of the penis in our free online pathology resource, PathWeb. The registration link is in the video description and registration is free. Microscopically, we can see invasive squamous cell carcinoma with these islands and sheets of malignant squamous cells, sometimes, as you see in this case, with keratinization. There are some subtypes, and in particular, the basaloid, sarcomatoid, and anaplastic subtypes have a worse prognosis. There may also be a background of intraepithelial neoplasia or dysplasia, or also a condition known as lichen sclerosis, where there is marked sclerosis of the lamina propria. And these tumors can have a more superficial growth pattern, as you can see here, or a vertical growth pattern where the tumor is more deeply invasive. Lymphovascular invasion and perineural invasion are frequent. And here is the page in PathWeb of the gross virtual pathology specimen of squamous cell carcinoma of the glands. And there is a separate video describing this virtual pathology specimen. You can find it in this video channel as well as in PathWeb. If you scroll down on this page, you can see additional information and also some annotated microscopy pictures of squamous cell carcinoma of the penis. Hence, in summary, this is a case of squamous cell carcinoma of the glans penis, which is composed of islands and sheets of malignant squamous cells. These squamous cells invade into the underlying lamina propria and into the corpus spongiosum, and there are also areas of keratinization and keratin pearl formation and these tumors tend to spread initially to the inguinal lymph nodes. Thank you.